In the first half, Academy player Connor Keelock and his mother explain the work and sacrifice it takes to succeed. MVC coach Macbeth Sibaya reviews finishing seventh in this year's multi-choice Disky Challenge. And we introduce you to our newest factor to join Matatanza, goalkeeper coach Lee. The question is often asked to the Super Sports United Academy about what is required from both the young player and of course his family in terms of support over and above that which the club and coaches provide. So today we introduce Connor Keelock and his mom who explains the sacrifices, commitment and dedication it's taken to get him to where he is now. My name is Connor Keelock, I play midfield. I go to Cambridge International, I'm in grade 10. I was born in Joburg 2000 and I started football when I was four. My nickname is Stevie G. I think it came around the, because of the way I play during the games. I decided to take football seriously because I love the game so much. I come from a sporting background, whereas my mom and dad were very sporty, and at the moment my brother is very sporty with water polo, rugby at Van Park High. Con is a very disciplined child. He's been from since he was born. He's well-natured, he's, well, he's a pleasant boy. He doesn't come across angry, he's just a well-rounded child and I'm very fortunate to have a child like that, that um, both my husband and I have raised. He's always been serious about his football. Since Connor was born, there was nothing else but all he wanted to do was watch football and play football and we've allowed him to achieve that and give him the, the time to be able to actually play the game that he enjoys. I think my family is very supportive to my football career, it took me out of normal school to put me into a home school type thing so I can get more hours into my football. Very, very proud um, and I think it's the hard work that Connor has actually put in himself. I go back to the discipline. For a child who wakes up at Hoppers 4 every morning, who goes to gym in the mornings, then goes to school, gets through his schoolwork, comes home, has a quick bite to eat and he's back on that football field. In the evenings he's back to his study books. So again, it's been about his discipline and what he's actually put into it. We sacrificed certain weekends, we've sacrificed some holidays, all to be able to support Connor um, in his football that he loves so much. I joined the academy two years ago. My first experience was against Sundowns and it was very nerve-wracking, but put a good performance in. Connor is um, he's really down to earth. Uh, he's simple, he keeps it basic. And, and that's what makes me to, you know, to look at him all the time because he does the basic things and it's simple. He's not a fancy player, but if he's not there, then, then there's a void, you know. You can see the difference if, if he's not playing. And we played it under 15s um, last year, but then when we promoted him at the second half of the year, if there was one player who was not going to go back to under 15s, it was Connor. Like I said, his simplicity has just been outstanding. He works well, he's a hard worker, and he does really well when he plays. You know, he will make you set up with the simple things that he's doing. Making him a better player, he just needs to be uh, more physical, you know, work on his, on his fitness. Because in the position that he's playing, he's doing a lot of pressing, you know, a lot of up and down, um, you know, on the field. So it's a lot of movement in that area that he's playing. So just to keep his fitness level up, you know not necessarily get stronger because in itself he's a strong boy, you know, he's, he's got good physique. But obviously to get the fitness level up on, on pressing and the way that he's playing. Sometimes we, we fail to, to miss that because of his simplicity in the, in the little thing that he's doing. And those are the things that oversettles a lot of things. But if you break it down, you know, just his physical ca capacity to, you know, just to get more physical. What I enjoy most about, about the academy is the way the coaches and managers treat us and how I have good teammates around me to support me. Travelling affects me quite a bit, especially during the week. I only get home at 6 and that's the time I have to do my homework between 6 and 8. So yeah, it's quite hard to get my homework done before school. I'm at the school with lots of different footballers from other academies and there's not much competitiveness around us. We've been mates since we were like 4, 3, since we started football and I think it's a good relationship between us. Some kids is home school, some kids got private schooling and then you know we have about 10 players in the Holy Trinity. We have Wednesdays as an off day, uh, which is focused on schoolwork, you know, and Sundays we have studies. The balancing part is, is more up to the kids, you know. We, we can put everything in place, but at the end of the day, um, if, the, if the player wants to, he must, you know, balance the two. You know, um, there's, there's certain things as coaches that we can't 
we can do, we can teach them, but on the end of the day, it's their decision if they want to do it. I have an older one too, who also is very into sports, but they need to also study. And I believe injury may take place one day, but even if an injury does take place, Connor will be the type of child who will maybe go into physiotherapy or um, go into BioConnect, but to always be part of the football team and to be on that pitch, whether he's playing or if, whether he's sitting on the sideline. So I believe a parent needs to play a big part in his child life and be able to sacrifice work, to be able to sacrifice the weekends, and to sacrifice yourself. That's what we've done as parents, to make sure that our kids will be able to succeed in what they want to do. Hi, my name is Connor Keelock, and you are watching Matter Times on Supersports. The 16 clubs in the Premiership all have reserve teams who compete in the multi-choice Dusky Challenge. This season, Matatanta finished in 7th position with 5 wins, 5 losses and 5 draws and having conceded just 13 goals. We can boast that Super Sport United had the best defence. Finishing on the 7th position, maybe I'll say we're lucky because we didn't start well. I went on to play a couple of games, you know, having to be in training for a week, preparing for a game. I had uh, what, maybe eight starters who are going to be starting in the game for the weekend because uh, most of our youngsters, they went uh, to the World Cup and also, again, at the first team, it was not easy for Gordon to release some of the players to be able to help in the MDC. It was uh, quite difficult because, you know, there are a couple of games that maybe we should have lost, but we were able to get points. And again, uh, into, back into the season, you know, beginning of the year, we had a lot of difficulties again preparing for the game because they played our, their last game, I think, on the uh, 23rd of uh, November. Then, because they are scholars, they haven't been home for, for a while. We're off for, for the whole month. And come back, coming back on the 5th, and we only had 13 to 14 days to prepare for, for our first game. So our preparations for, for the beginning of the season, uh, they were a little bit awkward. But it's one of those challenges. Key areas that I would like to work on in the next season, each and every FIFA window, at least, there is two youngsters who are uh, on par with the level of the PSL. Then it can be up to the coach if he needs those or if he doesn't need those players. I would like to meet that objective because it's the main objective because it's still a, a second team, it's still the reserve side. And again, you don't really have the last say. So you're not really in control of those conditions, of those situations. But one thing that you can really be in control of and be able to get results is the trainings, the top talent players that need to be trained, that need to be ready when the FIFA window opens. I think the MDC composition is meeting the objective, but I'm hoping that you know in future we can play the uh, same amount of games as the PSL because sometimes you find that the youngsters they don't get enough of uh, an opportunity because you know also uh, we have to keep in mind that uh, again it is the second team. The first team also needs to be able to be allowed the flexibility of sending players that they need them to, to have a practice game. And it's not also not a strange match because even those, uh, those, those first team players, they come into the MTC, they also bring a lot of quality and a lot of value into the competition. But I would like in future, fixtures can be set up in a way that if a first team play is playing on a Saturday or a Sunday, and uh, the second team can play maybe a, a, a day before in the very same city where they're playing, I think it, it could really serve a purpose because Again, the players who are joining us again for, from the first team can also have uh, that game time and be at the very same level as the players who are going to be participating on the main game. I think uh, it also gives a, a very good opportunity for young coaches, again, as myself, you know, to be able to gain experience. That relationship between myself and with the first team coaches and that sharing of knowledge and that sharing of knowledge of training and, and the way of, uh, of doing things. We have a very good structure at Supersport. You know, whether I'm here or not, Supersport is still going to be able to produce players. The Baxter played nearly 500 matches as a goalkeeper for some of the biggest clubs in Scotland and Sweden before getting his license as a goalkeeper coach, where most recently he was working in Turkey. Lee is now with Matatanza family, and speaking of family, he is the son of Stuart Baxter, our head coach, so there should be a great understanding between them which can only benefit the club. My name is Lee Baxter, I'm 40 this year, two kids, 
two daughters, nine and five. But before I came to South Africa, I was with uh, the coach in Turkey. And then before that, I was working at a club in Sweden called AIK. I was there from 2008, and then previous player before that. I didn't start as a goalkeeper. I started as an outfield player um, when I was younger, up until the age of 14. And then uh, I was playing in the, in the school team, and the goalkeeper got injured, and nobody wanted to go in goal, so I went in and played well. And then the coach said, you're better in goal than you are outfield, so I'll stay there. And then the year after that, I became professional. So uh, I was a professional apprentice at Blackburn Rovers. And then I traveled around. I was in Japan, Scotland, Sweden, England. It was through a goalkeeper coach that I had when I was in Japan. He's now the head goalkeeper coach at Arsenal, and he's my today mentor. He asked me questions about football that no other coach had asked me. And I learned a lot through him, and I started reflecting on the game. He just looked for new ways of training, new ways of, of developing, you know, goalkeeper techniques and advancing in, in, in line with the, with the game. It made me ask questions of myself as a player, and then I thought, well, if, if I do this as a player, maybe I can help younger players. And then that's where the coaching part came in. And then obviously, like, during the end of my career, injuries and so on and so on, I wanted to stay in football. So I thought coaching was the, was the next step. And obviously, with coach being the coach, then, I have a lot free as well, so. This is the first time working in South Africa. It could have been the second time because I was down in Cape Town and training with Ajax Cape Town in 2004. Monique Joseph was the goalkeeper there. He was going to move, so I was there, but that wasn't meant to be, so now I'm here. I love it here. For me, it's easy to work here. I'm around positive people, positive players. The company that we're, that we're working for is very well run. It's very professional. You know, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Since the coach Lee's come here, I've enjoyed myself. I've learned a lot from him in the short space that we've, we've been together. And yeah, we're getting to know each other as time goes by. Our relationship will obviously get much better. But yeah, only positive so far, you know, and I'm enjoying myself and yeah, everything is looking good. Today we're going to be working on uh, footwork and handling and speed. It's basic techniques we're training on, but the speed element is going to come in when the guys are working behind the back line. So balls that are coming up over the back line, I want them to be bursting into action. It's coming short, short spaces, but being quick off the mark. Because the goalkeeper's job really is 0 to 100 lots of times in a game. You don't see the goalkeeper running 400 metres round and round and round and round. It's, it'd be, it's nonsense. So that, that's really my basic philosophy is always around that. It's short, sharp and max tempo and then lots of rest in between. The exercise today was basically a lot of handling, a lot of footwork, speed, you know, and that's what we, that's the basics uh, in goalkeeping. You know, they want modern day keepers need to be active, you know, they need to be fast off the line. So that's what we've been doing today and keeping our speed, you know. Up there. We try and get it in every day, in some way. Uh, obviously, some days is, is not possible because the coach wants the goalkeepers in after 20 minutes. So it's like you have to ease them into the session and then they can explode into the, the full training. And usually, if I get a longer time to work with the guys, then we try and get that in at some point just to, to trigger that fast, fast twitch muscle fiber. I spoke to, to Roman uh, after a few days of uh, working with him and I said, look, you know, I'm not the finished product and it'll take a long time for me to learn a lot more and even then I'm not going to be a finished product as goalkeepers aren't finished products. I travel around, I look at other goalkeeper coaches' work because I find that interesting, I find it inspiring. And I also said to the guys that, you know, if you've worked with other coaches before and you feel that this, I like this drill because of ABC, or I like this exercise because of ABC, then please tell me because I might never, never have seen that before. So for me, if I get to see that and I learn it and I understand the, the thinking behind it, that means I've become a better coach and I can show the guys new exercises or new thoughts and they might think, ah, yeah. And if I can make two or three of those things in a short space of time, then we're moving the, the goalkeeping department forward. Hi, I'm Lee Baxter and you're watching Matt Santa on Supersport. In the second half, striker Kingston Nkata shares his story from his early life in Zimbabwe to his first year anniversary as a Tatanta. And Skima Matatanta is all the kids in Mlazi could say as we visited one of the schools in the Durban Township.
Kingston and Gata has scored nearly 40 goals in the top division league and top matches in his time in South Africa, adding to his ability to hit the net. He also provides a lot of opportunities to score, as is proven by his impressively high number of assists. He is kept at international level by Zimbabwe and is also an absolute premiership winner, scoring seven crucial goals to assist his former club to the title in 2013. We sat down with him to hear his story. My name is Kingston Kata. I was born in Zimbabwe, Zimba. I was born on the 27th of October, 1985. Growing up in Zim, it was tough. It was hectic, was uh, after my father passed away. My mom had to have a double shift of being a mother and a father also, providing for five children in the house. So it was a smooth journey, but it made our family to be one, we go through everything together until the way we are now. I started kicking ball at the age of 10. Every young boy at that time used to play street football. Nowadays I don't see street football because things are changing, there's so many grounds. But at that time we used to play in the street for fun. I think it was written by God that I'm going to be a professional footballer somehow, somehow in, in life. And even when I was a kid, I used to love football. My family didn't want me to play football because they think maybe football is just some sport that will make you not go to school. But I used to go to school, I go to school after school, I go and play football. So I made love with football since age of 10. My first breakthrough, it came when I was in high school. We were playing in high school, then this coach who was coaching an academy called Black Aces, he was coaching also our high school team. So he's the one that, you know what, can you just come and train with our academy and see how it goes on. From there, the rest is history. Free State Stars, the one that invited me for trials. I came this side, I passed the trials, I came back in 2008, January. Uh, from there, I've been here in South Africa since 2008. Coming to Free State as a young boy, not knowing the language, not knowing uh, South Africa so well, and also adjusting to playing football at night, where in Zim, you only play football uh, during the day. All the games that you play, it's half past three or 3 p.m. during the day. So those were the challenges that I had also, but you know, if they say you need to grow in life, you have to take those challenges, you have to take risk in life and life goes on. Kingston spent three years at Kaiser Chiefs before joining Supersport United in January last year. Leaving Naturena to be at Zatanza was a big move. How did it feel for the big man? Feels great. It was uh, at Supersport, you know, there's nothing called big egos, uh, big players. Every player, they still the same because everything that way they want is being a team player. And it's all about the team. No one will do things that it's outside a team. So I think that transition also made me feel like, you know what, that's a big part in my life and in my career to join Supersport. The boys are so marvelous. There's everything that you need in that changing room. It's not like you find someone sitting there alone, maybe chatting, not talking to people. No, it's like good vibe every day. Whether you have problems when you come to that changing room, at the moment, your troubles goes away until maybe after training session when you're going to a house like okay let me start thinking about my problems but as long as the boys are around i don't think you think of so many things because they make you feel at home i think the key to my success it came through hard work staying humble respecting each and every teammate that i came across every coach that comes every club that i went to taking uh, advices from everyone who's talking good, who's talking bad, the support from my family. I think also everything that happens, it's a key to the success uh, in football. I think the young kids who want to be professional players, they need to be humble, they need to listen, they need to work hard, they need to be focused in what they want to do in football. Because most of the players, when they are young, when they start training with big players, uh, senior teams, they tend to be big-headed. Once you do that, you won't go anyway. And also, you must stay away from drugs and activities that will make you harm your body. Because your body 
is the key to success in football. Hi, I'm Kingston Carter. You're watching Matazanza on Super Sport. Umlazi, just outside Durban, is the third largest township in Mzanzi. It is home to over half a million people, and it's where you will find Ogwini Comprehensive Technical High School, whose scholars recently took the morning off to schema Matatanza and learn life skills from our very own Jabu Matangu. Supersport United and Engine, we're here at the Ogwini Comprehensive School. We're just here to donate some uh, sports equipment to the school. This school is big. I mean, I've learned I've got 3,100 kids. This is the biggest school I've ever seen, and uh, by so doing, involved in 18 sports schools. So what I'm saying, we're here to make sure that they've, they've got equipment for the better. And then uh, we brought Jawi here to motivate the kids. I'm so honored and I'd like to thank again uh, Supersport and Engine for giving me the platform and the opportunity. Since we arrived here at Okwini, a uh, comprehensive uh, technical school, the response has been positive. And my message, you know, as I always do, I, I mentor. A, you know the youth you know try to build you know strong personalities to our youth so that they don't do the same mistakes that I did you know and uh, the impact was wonderful because it's not the first time that I really come to this school actually it's the second time in three years that I came to this school I was here with the multi-choice disc challenge and also I gave a motivational talk so to see again the kids recognizing me and welcoming back and also listening to me to what I'm saying and also saying to me yeah we will really try and do our best you know to listen to what you've said because you are talking the truth and we, what we like about you is is because you've lived that life you know you are telling us about the experiences that you went through so you can't ask for a better person like me to you know to try and mentor these young people also the teachers you know they have also challenges some of the teachers they also have alcohol problems they have you know a family problems they will get also motivated you know and hope and get uh, some hope from my story this is LO life and if possible we want this guy to come back and talk to our classes if he gets time because it's very important you know he is not talking about a book he's talking about something which is in the book that happened with him so children would love to learn more they learn faster if they listen to the person telling his own story so that's why I want to take advantage of this thing because he's a very strong ambassador of character building and that is going to promote and give the full meaning to why LO is supposed to be taught. Look, it will go a long way. You can see even the principal invited Jabu to come back to, to really speak to the, his uh, grade 11, grade 12 students to come and say, don't do drugs, focus to school, you can be a better person. Not everyone will be a successful to sport. I feel very proud of Super Sport being here and having to see Jabu. Seeing him inspiring our boys and girls about soccer, it was very nice. My brother is, is a very talented soccer player, so I'll get to tell him more about this so he can get to chat with my principal maybe and get connections up there. The partnership with Super Sports United and Engine and uh, with Jabu Maslangu as the, the ambassador really speaks to that because if you get the kids at this age to understand the dynamics, um, it really contributes a lot. So, so today was quite fantastic. The school had specifically requested um, that they get soccer balls because they're in dire need of that. And, and you know, without a soccer ball, you really can't play the, the game. So it, it came quite handy. It's being a successful day, kids are excited to see Jabu, kids are excited to see soccer balls, water bottles, all the sports equipment we give to them. And then, uh, I mean, if all the clubs we can try and do this, we can have a better country. If you'd like to get in touch with Supersport United and follow all the latest tweets, log on to twitter.com forward slash supersportfc. Don't forget to log on to our website www.sufc.co.za for all the latest news and updates on your favourite.